Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm going to show you the latest script I just uploaded to our GitHub page and to our website in the Support Center. So the script I have for you today is the Solar Panel Tool Automation Script. I've downloaded it here on my desktop, and I'm going to walk you through the code real quick, just at a high level, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it for you and show you how it works. So what you'll see here, the first thing it does, it just launches SDK 12. If you want to use SDK 11, just go ahead and change that to an 11. It creates the SDK object root, defines some variables for start and stop time, and then it starts building the scenario for you. And you see some of the commands there to create the scenario. It sets the start and stop time of your scenario. It creates a satellite for you. It sets the orbital parameters, defines the attitude. And then it runs the solar panel tool to actually calculate the total power collected by the solar panel as a function of time. So to show you how this works in a little bit more detail, let me go ahead and run this script. And all I have to do is just double click on the script. And it's, this is a VB script in this example. And then that's going to start executing the code line by line, uh, doing all these functions, starting up SDK 12, uh, creating a new scenario, and then inserting this object. And then what you'll see is after it's created the satellite, it's going to run the solar panel tool for me. So let me go ahead and minimize this so we can see SDK in the background here. And you see the satellite that we've inserted. You can see it's orbiting the Earth. And over time, it's changing its attitude. It's changing its relative position of the sun. And this window is a view from the sun's perspective. And it's calculating the solar panel tool based on the pixels that it's collecting from the graphics card. And that's how it works. So just like that, it's fin finished computing. Um, but I wanted to, real quick, show you a little bit more under the hood of how the solar panel tool actually works. All right, now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail into how the solar panel tool works under the hood. And it's a pretty cool application. This is actually a patent that AGI received. It's actually patent number uh, it's 586-4489. And it really sh talks about this method to calculate the area of the solar, panel t of the solar panels based on the angle of the sun. And it uses the graphics card to count the number of pixels exposed in, the extra, in that window that pops up. So it's a pretty cool application. Uh, but before going into that and how that works, I want to talk about just the solar panel tool and how it does the power calculation. So uh, the power that it calculates is uh, calculated based on this particular equation where you have the efficiency of the solar panels, which you know would put a value of 0.2 in there. So multiply that by the solar intensity, which is the uh, amount of sun that the spacecraft has on the solar array. So if you are in direct sunlight, it would be a value of 1. And if you're in eclipse, then it would be a value of 0. And then penumbra would be somewhere in between. So this is somewhere from 0 to 1. And then you multiply that by the solar radiance. So the solar radiance is that uh, value of 1367 watts per meter squared. And then you multiply that, finally, by the effective area of the solar panels that are exposed to the sun. And that is really where our patent comes in, this effective area. And that's what I'm going to talk about here in a little bit more detail. So the way that this works is, uh, I'll give you a diagram here. So you've got the sun that is uh, the source of the power. And you've got your spacecraft flying over in some orbit. And I'm just going to do a generic drawing here. But you maybe have a, a spacecraft that has two solar panels, let's say. And in the ideal condition, they're just pointed directly at the sun. And what you would see then, if you took a perspective from that sun looking at the spacecraft in an ideal state, your uh, view, that window, looking straight at the spacecraft from the sun's perspective, the panels would be nice and flat. And the entire uh, solar rays would be exposed to the sun. And the way that STK calculates the total power and the effective area is it actually allows you to mo uh, specify the area of your 3D model as solar panels. And you can also specify the efficiency in there. And the way that it does it is it, ca it counts the number of pixels that are exposed in this window. And that is how it calculates the effective area, which it then uses to calculate the power. So, so that's how it, it, it works. And it's really cool because SDK can have very complex geometries, orbit mechanics, 
uh, attitude dynamics. And once you specified all that inside of SDK, then all of the calculations are done for you automatically. So what we're going to show here is, you know, some time later, we've got the satellite, maybe it's doing some kind of uh, attitude maneuvers and the uh, solar rays are doing something else in that particular orientation. Uh, the window that STK is calculating, you don't have to do any work. It just, you go it forward in time and it'll show you the exposed area of the sun based on that different attitude profile. And again, it will calculate the exposed pic pixels based on the attitude and relative position of the sun. And that is just one example of how this works. But a, as you can imagine, things get much more complex. So think about something a little bit larger. So one of the customers that uses us and has been using STK for this particular application and operations for a long time is NASA. So NASA uses this uh, for the, the uh, International Space Station, which is a gigantic spacecraft, huge solar rays, lots of uh, parts and pieces that shade other parts of the solar panel. And so uh, that is one aspect. Um, but then also think of uh, Northrop Grumman, who also uses SDK, and they use it for Cygnus. So Cygnus is the resupply uh, a mission that has a cargo spacecraft go up and, and resupply the space station. And so as the cargo ship is in between the, the sun and the spacecraft and the space station, that's causing uh, degradation in solar power collection and vice versa. And so um, as you can imagine, if you've got the spacecraft now all of a sudden it's more complex, maybe you've got, I don't know, some kind of arm on it, uh, some kind of robotic arm or something like that or you're doing proximity operations to another spacecraft, maybe there's a CubeSat over here, um, you know, how much of that is impacting my solar power generation? And so, again, once you've modeled that in SDK, you don't have to worry about the solar panel collection. You've got the, uh, uh, that model or wherever the arm is at that particular time. Maybe you've got the CubeSats impacting these arrays. And so SDK just won't calculate that area and won't count those pixels. And Therefore, it'll tell you what the effective area actually is exposed to the sun, and it uses that in the power calculation. So it's a great combination of the visual capabilities, the, the calculation capabilities of SDK, and that's uh, why I like to refer to that as analytical graphics. All right, so now that we have a little bit more background about how the solar panel tool works, let's go ahead and look at some of the results. So we can go ahead and click OK. That's going to close down SDK for us and bring us back to our desktop. And now we notice we have a couple different files there. Uh, so the first one I'll go ahead and open up here. This is a report, just a time history report of the power over time. You can see some of those parameters like the solar intensity. So when it's zero, it's uh, when the satellite's in eclipse. And you see it starts collecting here at these, this time. And depending on the attitude of the satellite and the relative orientation of the sun, you'll have different values. And another way to view this is also it outputs a graph for you. So here's a graph that shows that same power collection as a function of time. And so this is just a quick example of automating one of SDK's powerful tools to do solar panel collection. But this is one of thousands and thousands of data providers that you can use in your uh, operations environment or in your, if you're automating like a trade study and more of an engineering design, if you're more in a digital mission engineering up front doing the design, you can run it, uh, the automation and interface that way. Or if you're doing operations, day-to-day -day operations of existing systems, this is what we refer to as digital mission operations. So all of this is available through the SDK programming interface. It, everything you can do in SDK can be automated just like this. So check out our GitHub page for other examples. Check out our uh, support page to download the code samples. And uh, if you have any questions at all, just uh, email our support team, support at agi.com. Thanks.